from the studios of Blackwater Media in the city of Atlanta. It's time for the Dr. William Lester Show, and I want to say thank you for joining us. And as you know, on our show, our number one priority is all things cool and all things vintage. And there is very little else, if anything at all, there is, that is more cool and more vintage than the music of Motown. And those of you who have been following the show know that I'm a huge fan of the music of the 1960s in general and a fan of Motown in particular. So I am very pleased and very happy to bring on to the program one of the legends of Motown, Miss Mary Wilson of the Supremes. Miss Wilson, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm glad to be on it. <laughs> well, we're very pleased to have you. And because you were there, uh, you know, when, when Motown was in its formative years. And one of the things I wanted you to share with the listeners, it's a it's a story that I know, but, I, you know, I, I, I love Motown and I try to find out everything about it. So a lot of the listeners may not know when when the do there's two things, the Supremes and the Temptations had something of a common beginning uh, in terms of the primes and the primates. Can you talk just for a minute about how that happened and how you eventually became two different groups? <laughs> well, actually, you know, it's very, very wonderful to have uh, um, mentors and, 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 and people who started your group uh, off to actually become um, I don't know, friends for 50-some years. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened with us. Uh, Flo, Di Florence, I should say, Diane and myself, uh, along with Betty McGlon, were uh, a group called the Primates. Now, how we became the Primates was through two of the members who uh, became uh, two members of the Temptations. And how that happened was uh, Florence and I were attending the same elementary school. Flo, Diane, and I all lived in the same uh, area, the Brewster Projects. So it happened actually in, in elementary school. There was a talent show of and, and uh, I went on the show, and I kind of pantomimed to the Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers song, mm -hmm. one of their songs. And Florence Ballard was also on that show, who I didn't really know that well, but she lived in the, we lived in the same area. And so she, she sang uh, Ave Maria. Oh. And, yeah, and so after the show, and we were only, we were in the fifth grade. This was the fifth grade, and uh, I guess I was 11 and a half, and Florence was 12. And afterwards, we kind of migrated to each other and started talking about how we admired each other's talent and what we had done on that show. And remind you that we were only 11, 12 years old. Right. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, it was at the time around uh, that, uh, you know, rock and roll was really new. And she told me that her sister was dating this guy who was in a group called The Primes, P R I M. Yes, I guess what. Mm -hmm. And that they wanted to start a group of girls to uh, have as their sister group. And she told them about me, who she had just met in school. And, and one of the guys knew Diane from the neighborhood and asked her if she would like to be a part of this, this new group they were forming. So uh, since we all lived right around the corner from each other, we, we decided we'd walk over to the, the boys' apartment and, uh, and check it all out. And so we did. And, and, and as I said, we all still were very new friends. We didn't really know each other that well. Right. We got there to their apartment, and it was Eddie Kendricks, Paul Williams, who later became, you know, two members of the Thames. And there was another guy named uh, 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 Hal Osborne. Well, I was born. Anyway, so uh, they they said, well, you know, we want to start this girl group, and you know, we want to see if you girls can sing, whatever. And Florence started singing one of the Ray Charles songs, and and then we all kind of chimed in. And Betty was there as well, who we didn't know, but she was dating one of the guys, and we all kind of chimed in, and it sounded good. And they said, okay, would you girls like to? you know, form the group, and we said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how we got together. But we weren't part of the same group. They would do their show, okay. uh, and we learned songs, and we would do our 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 songs. Um, but later on, very shortly after that, we only did a few shows together. After that, um, they went their way, and we went our way. 
and both and, ended up continue, in Motown. <laughs> but we, we, we continue, you know, we t- continue doing record hops and things like that mm-hmm. in Detroit, Michigan, as the primates, we were called. And so at some point, you, you guys just decided to change your name? Well, no, that we, we worked around Detroit for a couple of years, actually, and... Um, and then we decided, because we were doing record hops with lots of other artists who were recording, mm-hmm. and uh, we got the idea, well, wow, everyone's recording. Why don't we think about recording? Because we were just doing it as fun. Uh, and so we decided to audition for uh, Motown. Mm-hmm. And when we auditioned to Mo- for, Mo- for Motown, it just so happened that uh, uh, they turned us down and we, we went someplace else. We recorded a couple of songs. And then we decided, hey, we want to be with Motown. So we just went back to Motown, and eventually, eventually, they signed us, but not before they realized we really were serious. And, we, you know, by now we're like 15 years old, because right. we have been working on Detroit for a couple of years. And uh, so they, Mr. Gordy turned us down mainly because I guess we were young, and he didn't want to have four young girls running around his company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's how we finally, okay. you know, got there. We just went back and, and just stayed until they said, okay, I guess you girls are serious. And at the age of 16, mm-hmm. we signed a contract. It was at that point that Mr. Gordy said he wanted us to change our names. And Florence Ballard came up with uh, the name Supreme. And that's how we, we got, got the name Supreme. Okay, so I, this is the first time I've ever heard that, that Florence came up with the name. So that's remarkable. Uh-huh. Now... Mm-hmm. Now, you guys had some frustration, I think, because you recorded and put out some records that were not successful, and and there was some there was some frustration on your part. And then, of course, uh, uh, baby love. And so, can you talk about you know going from you know why can't we get a hit in, in that whole process uh, of of getting that song? And now, is it true initially? When you heard a demo or a, a sample of Baby Love, you were not that excited. Well, actually, let, let me go back and, and start. Okay. Um, we, 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 we did record a lot of songs mm-hmm. at Motown. I'm very happy to say that they just let us record, and we recorded a lot of songs. Okay. Uh, we were the first girl group there at Motown, and there was, uh, you know, people who were doing very well, Mary Wells, The Miracles, mm-hmm. Mark Johnson, a, a lot of people who were doing very well. And so we just, they just let us record. And understand, we were only, at this point, 16 years old. So uh, we were just happy to be recorded. We weren't, at that point, really trying to get a hit record. We okay. were just recording and having fun, because we're still in high school. So there came a time, though, in, uh, like, 62, or after we graduated in 1961, well, we really became very serious about wanting to do what everyone else was doing. I mean, they were, they, they were not only just recording, they were getting hit records, and you would hear them on the radio. So, you know, at that point, we decided, well, hey, you know, we need to really go ahead and try to be serious about this and get a hit record because we had graduated from high school, and our parents had saved up their little pennies to send us to college. <laughs> right. so to college you know, they wanted us to go. But one thing my mother always wanted was for us to get an education mm-hmm. because that was, for the black community, that was the most important thing at that time. Of course. Of course. And, and so we we got so serious, we were telling Motown, well, listen, we told Barry and, and, and everyone, we need to have a hit record now because if we don't, our parents are going to send us to college. <laughs> so we, we uh, impressed upon them that, you know, we needed to get a hit record at that point. And that's when they brought, Holland Doja Holland brought us um, Where Did Our Love Go? And that right. was a song we did not like. We did not, it wasn't so much we didn't like the song, it's just we didn't feel it was a hit because it, it's, a lot of your listeners will know the Marvelous got a hit, Please Mr. Postman, uh, right. you know, Martha and the Vandellas, they were getting hits, everybody was getting hits. And we were not. So and when they brought Where Did Our Love Go to us, it just did not sound like a hit to us. Mm-hmm. It was very simple. Um, and, and what we, Florence and I didn't like was that there was no harmony. And so we were singing in unison. Right. You know, and our group, we, we had lots of harmonies back in those days. And so we were just not pleased with the whole thing. But Holla Doja Holla and say, listen, this is going to be a hit. So we had to record it. What can we do? You know, right. we were low on the totem pole. <laughs> and so we had to do whatever they gave, they used whatever they gave us, and eventually, uh, you know, they put it out, 
and it became a hit. And so, of course, we had to eat our words. <laughs> I don't think you minded, did you? <laughs> at that point, we didn't. But at <laughs> first, we did not like that record at all. And, of course, we started recording Baby Love, as you mentioned, right. Stop in the Name of Love. So records uh, began, began to uh, be more uh, sophisticated for us, and we enjoyed it, and, and we were happy that we had to hit records. So then we were okay. And, you know, during that time... Mm -hmm. So while we were just recording and didn't have a hit record, I coined this phrase, and everybody now says it, the no-hit supreme. I was the one who coined <laughs> this phrase. Because I knew that everybody was talking about us behind our back. You know, yeah, the Supremes think they're so good, but they don't have a hit record, you know. Wow. <laughs> and so I kind of coined that because I knew that's what was going on behind our backs. We really thought we were good. I mean, we knew we were good. But we just could not get that hit record, and everyone else was getting a hit record. So, do you think it was? Do you think it was just a matter? Because, like I said, you you were good. I mean, you were the the the, the same group of girls who were not having hits is mm -hmm. now having hits. So, mm -hmm. do you think it was just a matter of getting the right song at the right time? Well, it's it's, it's it, of course because it's the same thing as you know you can be with a great designer or a tailor or whatever. And uh, but the, the outfits don't fit you because your body is a little different. So it, it you know whatever fits. And we, I should go back to say Holland Doja Holland, who Barry put us with, mm -hmm. uh, when he realized how serious we were. He said, "I'm I'm going to put you with my top writing team." Okay. And so they 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 really tailored the music for us, and that made the difference because we were singing all kinds of music prior to that and. Good songs. I mean, Smokey Robinson wrote some wonderful songs for us. Uh, but, you know, it, that right song came along when the Holland Doja Holland um, Taylor made that particular style for us. And, uh, and and that made the difference. So, yeah, it depends on, on, on you can have a good voice, but if you don't get the right song, uh, it, you know, you, it, does, it makes a difference, you know, that the right song for your voice. I mean, even I, as a, as a vocalist now, mm -hmm. have had a hard time trying to find what was my style after being with the Supremes. That was not my singing style uh, for me, Mary Wilson. Uh -huh. So now, after all these years, I realized what I was doing, the ballads, were really what my style is. So now I do a jazz show and really? I do all... I do all of the ballads and the big ballads, and that's my. I finally found my style a little late. <laughs> right. But you know, it's funny that you, it's funny that you say that because even as like for myself as a fan, mm -hmm. I mean, I I never thought. I wonder what Florence Ballard. I wonder what her real sound is. I wonder what Mary Wilson's. I you know when I think of it, I say, oh, Mary Wilson, the Supremes. Yeah. And you just right. go, you just go right there, and then of course you start thinking of all the different songs. Yeah. And said, "Well, listen, that's they they were great. So, who cares what their style is? You know, they're just yeah, I know, I know. You know, I, I know. mean, it, 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 that's how we think as fans. You know, yeah, I know. Um, but the thing is, and and I'm very happy about our our success mm -hmm. uh, and and the way it went. Uh, it, sometimes in a group, you do lose some of your individuality mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of the whole. And that's the way it was with us. And but but it was still." wonderful i mean i've had a great career sure. so you know it was wonderful but you know there is something as an individual i've always kind of felt that well, i wasn't doing everything i could um and you mentioned florence and the same thing with florence florence had a tremendously wonderful voice um very much alike to an etta james or something like that wow. But because our style was not geared to rhythm and blues uh, or ballad, so we didn't quite fit into the equation. But I don't have any regrets about um, about that because I, I can now do what I need to do for my voice. Unfortunately, Florence passed away, yes. you know, and uh, didn't get an opportunity. But you know, and that happens a lot in life. So you know, you 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 either want to get your own or you want to get success. I wanted success. I was happy with, uh, you know, our the songs we had and, and loved the fact that, you know, Diane could sing those songs. So, I couldn't. I mean, they were not my style. Is it is it ever, does it ever settle on you that, you know, 
you 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 are not just a successful entertainer. It, does it ever settle on you that you were part of something historical? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, I, I you know, as the Supremes, we were we're part of history. I mean, we helped write American history for the sixties. Right. Exa exactly. Uh, I mean, yes, and and I'm so very much aware of that. So I often wondered about that, but it says, well, you know, I know that they obviously know they were successful they are, you know, and what have you. But I mean, do, do they really understand that, you know, they have they've changed. You change things. You change the landscape of that decade. And for that reason, everything that came after. Well, you know, I really uh, I of course I do. And I've had enough time to grow up to understand that when you're young you're so busy doing what you're doing mm -hmm. so you might see that you know you are part of an, uh, an historical sort of uh, happening uh, and, but sometimes your own life gets in the way of that there's so many people like Marvin Gaye Florence Ballard I mean mm -hmm. Eddie Kendrick a lot of people at Motown who had they been able to live perhaps longer would now understand how great they really were I mean, I think all of us, everyone knew how great they were, was, but it wasn't really important at that time. You know, <laughs> what was important is that you were doing what you wanted to do and you were enjoying it. I'm just happy I've had a full life to now reflect on my life. And really, as you kind of put that to my mind, is that, yes, we did accomplish a heck of a lot. And we were part of, of, of American history. And we did help to make change. So I'm very proud of that, to, to be able to be here and really understand it, even though you know it when, when it's happening. I I read on a number of occasions that in the mid-60s, when the Supremes were at the height of their popularity, uh, that you guys uh, went to uh, England and you, you met the Beatles, who I guess in a way were almost running a parallel track with you in terms of making number one hits and when i you know when i when i go back and i look at the billboard charts of those of that era it, it, the number one song it's either you or them <laughs> yeah, yeah and so what well, that, what was that like what, what was that like well you know it wasn't as important to me i, sure. I can't talk about for diane or for florence it wasn't I don't think for us it was as important as, as it was for Motown and the writers. Sure. Because they, they were the ones who were creating the music, and they were the ones who were, you know, looking at the charts and seeing what other artists were doing and what the, you know, the British artists were doing. Mm -hmm. I, again, I got to say, and I think I'm speaking for Diane when I say this, we were so much having fun and also, um, you know, doing helping to create the music in terms of our performances and, and television shows and things like that. It wasn't our job to be so concerned about what number we were. We were happy when we got the number one five times in a row. Right. It, that was a great achievement, but I don't think we were counting it as, as say, the writers and producers and, and, and Motown were. You know, they were the ones who were really concerned about what you're talking about, more so than us. Were there other were there other artists outside of Motown at that time uh, that you guys were particularly big fans of? You know, obviously, I mean, you you were familiar with all of your all of your colleagues inside of Motown, but I'm curious about those who were outside of that. Well, you know, we were teenagers and we were young people, so we were as much into the music that was happening as as you guys were you know we, right. we had our favorites and and i, I remember florence talking about um uh uh, uh johnny mathis i mean she yeah. loved johnny yeah. mathis uh you know and and we did lots of in the earlier days we used to do what we called what was called i should say the chitlin circuit mm -hmm. and on the chitlin circuit you know we worked places like obviously the apollo in new york mm -hmm. um Howard Theater in Washington, D.C., the Uptown in Philadelphia, the Royal Theater in, in Baltimore. And on those shows, it, it was it, they were all held at, in theaters. And so the format was they, the theater would play a movie, 
people would see the movie, and then they would sit and wait for the show. On the show, you would have anywhere from five to ten artists on the show. I mean, we worked on shows with uh, Dionne Warwick. I remember we did shows with Jackie Wilson. Uh, you know, we, everybody. Everybody did these shows, Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells. Mm-hmm. And we all, Lil Anthony and the Imperials, we all did those shows. And so we were always together uh, doing these shows. Uh, and then so, yeah, we loved, you know, I remember Diane's mom used to love uh, Otis Redding. She said, well, is that guy, with, that guy who shakes his leg like that, is, is he going to be on the show? <laughs> she loved Otis Redding. Uh, you know, so we were, we were, yeah, we loved all all the artists, and, and we had a chance to work with them, which was even more exciting. So we had more, more fun uh, behind the stage than you guys had watching us on stage. You know, that was... Like, oh, well, then you guys you had know, a ball. Yeah. We had a ball. <laughs> we had a ball. Yeah, we absolutely had a ball. So, yeah, love them. You know, we were, like I said, we loved music. We were into music just as much as everybody else was, and we had even more fun because we were work, working with those people as well. When you when you watch the old film clips, when you watch the old videos of, of, of the Supremes and the other artists, the Four Tops, when you watch the films of you guys performing... You can absolutely see the energy. You see it in the way you guys move around. You see it in the expressions on your faces. You see it with the enthusiasm of just singing into the microphone. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, sure. I mean, we were into it because we were enjoying what we were doing. Uh, and, and, you know, it has to be understood that it's not like today. Uh, there's nothing wrong with what's going on today, but I mean, back in those days, it was still very new and mm-hmm. exciting. And uh, to have all of those artists on the same show was so, I mean, you, you're right, the energy was so high. It was so exciting. Um, uh, Jackson, uh, uh, I'm looking at his face right now, I can't think of his first name. Um, you know, we talk about it all the time, any day now. Um, oh, was uh, it uh, not Chuck Jackson? Ooh. Um, Chuck, yeah, Chuck. Chuck Jackson, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm having a senior moment here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seeing his face and can't say his name. Yeah, Chuck and I talk about how much fun we had in those days. I mean, and we're both now, you know, he's over. I'm 72, and he's older than I am, probably a couple of years. But, you know, we, we, we see each other and we talk about the good old days. And let me tell you, it was the good old days. Well, Ms. Wilson, what are you, what's going on with you today? Tell us, tell us what you're doing today, what you're involved in, because and, and, uh, we're, we're, we're still fans and we're going to be fans. So what's going on? Well, let me first tell you what I've just come back from my uh, bucket list, one of my bucket list uh, vacations in South Africa. Okay. I just got back a couple of days ago. And uh, I was there for two weeks over there, and we did a safari. There were 14 women, and we wow. all just had a ball with the animals. I mean, I have, I posted some on Facebook, some of, of, of the elephants and the giraffes and the, and the zebras and the lions and the panthers and the cheetahs, and it was just amazing. So that was, I'm just, just home from that. So I'm kind of resting up here in Las Vegas just uh, uh, to get over home you know, rest up from a vacation. But in terms of my career in terms of my career, I have lots of projects going on. I'm I'm studying acting. Uh now I've been doing this for the last year, uh taking acting classes in mm-hmm. between my my shows and touring. And I'm taking improvisational classes as well. So I just released I didn't release I I I'm part of a film called Speak, S P E A K mm-hmm. And it's been going, making its rounds on the uh, film festivals here in the United States. Um, and it's, I think people can find it online. And it's really great. It's starring Susan Blakely. So that's my newest endeavor is to is acting. And I'm very happy. Uh, you know, this is my pr- first professional film. I've done a couple of the short films. This is the first. So that's what I'm really concentrating now on is my acting. And uh, also, I have I'm working on a coffee table book. Okay. This will be my, this will be my third book. It could be considered my fourth, but it's really the third. And it's based upon the Supreme uh, gowns, the gowns oh. that we wear all over the world, actually. So I have um, uh, an exhibit that tours various museums 
It's been in, in England, uh, all over Great Britain, actually, mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years. And it's now in, where is it? It's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. But uh, it's going to be in Mississippi, my, my birth state, uh, pretty soon. And so that's those are the three kind of major things that are going on right now. Um, I do have some record releases that have uh, been on, you know, this radio is not really like it used to be. No. So I don't think people can hear it on the radio, my songs, but I did have a number 17 dance hit from on the Billboard charts recently. And uh, I have two songs that are... That means you got a lot of downloads. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I hope. Yeah, I hope everyone's paying. <laughs> no, of course, everybody. You know, no, no, everybody. It's legitimate downloads. Please. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So because we don't get royalties like we used to. Exactly. You know, and that there are no more, you know, mom and pops uh, record shops. So it's very difficult to sell records nowadays. But anyway, so that's yeah, my song, um, Life's Been Good to Me, is one of, one song, and Johnny May, which is a, um, a Mother's Day song mm -hmm. uh, for my mom, and I hope people will download that around Mother's Day because it's a great Mother's Day song. And those two songs are from a CD that I'm supposed to be releasing, but the record company hasn't released it yet, but at least the two songs are online. And uh, and then, of course, the Billboard uh, dance hit is online as well. And I see uh, I've been up to MaryWilson.com. Mm. And there's I mean, there's a lot of things here, uh, I guess, which reflect uh, what you just some of the things you just said. Uh, mm -hmm. And I see all kinds of things available here uh, for purchase. And so and the gown collection is 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 there, too, I see. Uh, and so, you know, I, I look Hey guys, you know, I know you're fans like I am, and so if you go up to MaryWilson.com, you can see all of these things. Miss Wilson, I, I know that your your time is limited, and we are so grateful for having you to come on to the show and uh, spend some time with us, and uh, we all love you, and we wish you con uh, continued success. Um uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, the Dr. William Lester Show. Our very special guest has been Miss Mary Wilson, of course, Motown legend of the Supremes. Now, of course, a, a tremendous performer in her own rights. I guess uh, we should be looking forward to seeing her on screen now uh, because <laughs> with her with her acting chops. Miss Wilson, thank you very much. And uh, again, continued success. And we love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. It was an absolute honor and a privilege to have Miss Mary Wilson on the Dr. William Lester show. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, while we were talking, I was, of course, enjoying a wonderful hot cup of Cafe Bustelo, uh, espresso ground coffee, uh, wonderfully delicious uh, coffee, and enjoying that with, with my pipe packed full of McClellan's Frog Morton pipe tobacco. It's just a, a wonderful, excellent coffee uh, uh, pipe tobacco pairing as I was able to uh, carry out a dialogue with Miss Wilson, a spectacular uh, Motown legend. So I'd like to remind you guys again how to listen to the show. Of course, you can listen to all the episodes on the Blackwater Media uh, a YouTube channel. Of course, you can listen on the Dr. William Lester Show uh, Facebook page, the William Lester Show Facebook page, and of course, as always, on Google+. Plus. So we'll stop there. We'll get back to talking about our cool vintage uh, Halloween film festival and the great films we've been talking about. But until that time, remember, it's always cool. It's always vintage. And I will see you next time. <laughs>